I think all dog owners can agree that bathing your dog at home is not the most fun task, but for some owners like myself, it is one of the best ways of saving money at the groomers, especially if your dog loves to play in the least clean of ways. John Hurt is a massive fan of playing in the wettest, dirtiest, smelliest places, and he loves it, but unfortunately, it means that he is always in need of a clean. I only bath John once a month, as overbathing your dog is not good for their skin or their fur. Once a month is more than often enough for a dog, and if you can bathe your dog less often than that, it's even better. Everyone has a different method of bathing their own dog, so I'm going to show you the way I do it, and hopefully you'll find this video useful and maybe be inspired to wash your dog at home and save the small fortune of paying for a groomer to do it. To begin with, I fill up the bath with just a few inches of warm water for John to stand in. This helps to keep him warmer during his bath as well as giving his feet a nice long soak. And the water is also going to come in useful later during the bath. To check the temperature of the water, just dip your elbow into it. The water should be a little warmer than room temperature, but not hot. After this, I take off John's collars and place him into the water. Now, if your dog is not easy to control in the bath, you may want to consider keeping a collar on. I also suggest lifting your dog into the bath rather than letting them jump in so that they don't slip or hurt themselves. With the shower head on its most gentle setting and using warm or cool water, start getting your dog's body wet. Make sure that you soak their back, their bottom, belly, legs, and their neck but don't get their head wet just yet. Most dogs feel pretty uncomfortable when their face and ears are wet, so leave this until the very end. Once you're happy that your dog is wet enough, take your chosen dog shampoo and start applying it to the fur. Now you can either pour it straight onto the fur or put a little bit in your hands, rub them together and rub your hands through the fur. And I find this method allows you to use less shampoo and distribute it more evenly. Take this opportunity to give your dog some much needed attention. Baths aren't always pleasant, but they can be more enjoyable if you take the time to give your dog a nice massage while applying the shampoo. It also helps to get them really clean and release odors that are trapped in the fur. During the whole bathing process, be sure to talk to your dog in a happy, praising voice to reassure them that the bath isn't a bad thing. Every so often, scoop up some of the bath water in your hands and pour it over your dog to help lather the shampoo. This will again help the shampoo to go much further and you'll get a cleaner result. Don't forget that the tail and legs all need a really good clean too. When you feel that you've finished shampooing your dog, take the shower head again and gently rinse it out of the fur. It's so important to make sure that you wash all of the shampoo off fully, as leaving any residue on your dog can lead to itching and dry skin. Now that your dog's body is clean, it's time to do the head. Now there are a few different ways you can do this to reduce stress, but what I do is I first run a little water on top of the dog's head using the shower, and then I use my hands to gently wipe that water around the face and muzzle. I don't like putting the shower directly over the face, as even when it's running really slow, it can still be a horrible experience for the dog. Once his face is wet, I give the inside of John's ears a quick check, as he is a floppy-eared dog, he is prone to dirty ears and infections, so if the ears need cleaning, this is when I'll do them. And this time his ears were clean, so I move straight on to shampooing his head and muzzle. Take the teeniest, tiniest amount of shampoo, rub it between your hands, and apply it to the top of your dog's head and the underneath and sides of the muzzle. Don't place shampoo near the eyes, it's just too risky. If they need to be cleaned, just wipe them with a piece of damp cotton. Once again, lather the shampoo in and rinse it off using your hands, being careful not to leave any residue. Remove the plug from the bath and as the water drains, give your dog's feet a quick rinse over. If you have a long-haired dog, you can also give their body one last quick rinse to wash off any loose hairs. With your dog still in the bathtub and the water drained, use their towel to give them a quick rub to remove any excess water. Focus especially on their legs, their feet and their belly so that they don't get the floor soaking wet when they get out the bath. How you dry your dog is completely up to you. I usually towel dry John as much as I can and let him air dry the rest since it's not that cold here. And once he's dry, Dan gives him a really good brush and voila, 
Now we have a beautifully clean and nice smelling puppy. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave it a big old thumbs up. You can also share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye! So don't tell me how to act or how I should